now we Christians and Muslims and Hindus accept religious teaching as the word of God. The religious minded accept the Bible as the word of God. We Hindus accept Vedas as revealed, as Shruti. Muslims accept Quran as communicated by God to Muhammad. Similarly, Buddhists accept their teaching as coming from an enlightened soul like Buddha. Now, what should be our attitude to a teaching which we accept as coming from God or from a divine person? Implicit obedience, implicit belief. But what do we do? We just reject it and go our way so that we act as hypocrites, believing in one thing and acting in the other way. Now a human being with such an intellect, with such an education, with such powers of discrimination, is completely carried away by his lusts when he rejects religious teaching to act on his own desires and passions. That is wrong on the part of the psychologist to say depression of certain passions leads to insanity and other diseases of the brain. On the other hand, the reverse is the truth. If man doesn't discipline himself, he will lose his balance and his mind, not the one who disciplines himself. So the reason for our present state of hazard is because we have completely deviated from the teachings of the Prophet, from the teachings contained in the revealed literature of the world, and done what we liked. In the meanwhile, our intellect has been growing. This, the scientific age, is not because there were some pioneers and they introduced, it is because a certain stage has been reached in the evolution of the brain. You couldn't have it 300 years before. The evolution of the brain. It is the brain that became ripe for this experience. But I've read recently uh, one of the major magazines in the United States called Omni carried an interview with Professor Ernst Mayer yes. of Harvard University. Yeah. He's an internationally known evolutionist. And he claims that the brain is no longer evolving. It's merely changing. And he says it's entirely wrong to say that we are evolving to a higher level. Mm -hmm. We are merely changing. So this would contradict what you are saying. You see, this is also a paradox. Mayer is a scientist. And a scientist is expected to say what is proven. Science means proven knowledge. But what you find at this moment is scientists indulging in guesses, speculations and theories than even other men. Now, scientists know nothing about the brain yet. The brain is a mystery. You can see any book on the brain and you will find the brain experts all write that there is much, much to be understood about the brain. This is the last frontier between science and the knowledge of the universe. How could the mayor say that the brain is not evolving when it is not possible for him to scrutinize the brain? For this knowledge needs internal observation. And science has rejected that internal observation on the basis of which I am saying that the brain is evolved. Unless scientists try this method and fail, then of course I will feel that I was in the wrong. But so long as they only theorize and speculate, we cannot accept what they say at its face value. So Mr. Mayer is repeating the same old tale. But on the other hand, you have other scientists who say that the brain is evolving, like Salk. Dr. Jonas Salk. Yeah, he has written 
This brain is evolving only in another magazine. So whom to believe? Sock or mayor? And scientists are contradicting themselves. For instance, what explanation they have for this gulf between the Stone Age man and the present man? If they say man has not evolved, how this difference in the intellectual ability of the two? Well, I think they try to explain that by merely giving it the term social evolution. Yeah, fine, but without the neurons. Does it mean that the mind can reach higher states of thinking without in any way affecting the brain? If that is a fact, then all their theories are wrong. The neurons are not directly involved. It means that mind is something else than the brain. I suppose they have merely accepted the idea that the weight of the brain or the size of the skull determines the uh, the size of the cavity or the uh, skull. Absolutely incorrect. As this new book says that in the majority of cases the brain weight of the geniuses, the brain size has been even sometimes less than the average. The size and the shape of the brain does not determine the quality of thought or the quality of the mind. They are in the dark because the brain is fed by a power, by an energy, which is absolutely beyond the sensory probe of human beings. It is that energy which determines the quality of mind, not the brain cells. But it is that energy which science has not been able to measure or to even detect. It will never be able with these methods. Some other methods will have to be devised to explore the brain, not with the normal methods. They will only come against a rock. They will only see the neurons. They will see their connections. But they will never be able to measure or to know that which animates the neurons, as they are never able to see or know that which animates the human body. The same mind which animates the human body animates the brain also, but you cannot see it by any means. But you say another method has to be devised. Yeah, the, by the inner method of observation. But that is the subjective method and that's antithetical to science. You see, this is a frontier where man has to perfect himself before he can observe the brain. This is the frontier. Man will continue to strike his head against rocks to know himself, to know the mystery of his brain, but he will never succeed unless he disciplines himself, purifies his heart, and then looks within his own self. So the main exercise would be to purify the heart? To follow the revelations of the great saviors of man, to live that life, could we live that life with our present technology? To make the best use of what nature has already provided for us in the animal and plant kingdoms. Now, technology is using the minerals and flooding the world with the machines. But ultimately, its aim will be to make the best use of what nature has already provided for us in the animal and the plant kingdoms. But does that mean that we have to go backwards? We have to go forward. We are going back at this time. Mentally, we are going backward. Though physically, measured in terms of comfort, we are going forward. But in terms of evolution and our mental development, we are going backward. But do we have to give up? such things as the computer and our modern telecommunications. We have not only to give up computers, we have also to give up the aeroplanes, fast cars, a thousand things, and to use everything judiciously if we want to save our brains. But do we have to give it up or do we have to just slow it down? 